Hello viewers, Super GT here. So the Mazda Roadster Touring Car has been added to Gran Turismo Sport and it caught my attention as one of the cars that can make for some very exciting racing. That proved to be the case on a recent live stream, but I thought I would create another lobby um, away from a live stream, so just created a lobby out of nowhere. Got a couple of people to join and we were going to see if we could make for some very good racing as we had in that live stream. So, Mazda, everyone in the same car, uh, starting off around Kyoto. So it's pretty much a one make little series here, starting off with qualifying, a quick five minute qualifying session, get everyone used to the circuit and sort the men from the boys in terms of lap time. Now this Lancia, obviously this guy chose the wrong car, didn't get the memo and got possessed by the devil, started driving around in the pit lane and smashing into the wall. I suppose that's what happens when you don't get the memo of which car to select. But uh, at the end of qualifying, um, settling in third place, 0.002 away from second. So very close, Matt Man just getting into the 42s, 42.999. Quite a close grid, as it perhaps should be with the same car around a very short circuit. But that is the recipe for a good race, I suppose. And these cars, I think, are very well suited to these shorter style, smaller circuits. As it's not the most powerful car, it handles very well. Uh, so the smaller tracks suit this track down to the ground. Off the line we go then for seven laps around this short Kyoto circuit. The Greek guy behind from fourth immediately overtaking me, getting up the inside. And um, as we come down over the crest, down the hill again into this a little ch uh, chicane here so I'm going to regain that position so this race is it's almost an o it's almost like an oval race it's almost oval racing to be honest uh, with the way it feels um, there's minimal amount of corners and it really really depends on the fine way that you drive you have to really drive very smoothly and make minimal amount of mistakes so I mean, for anyone who thinks that NASCAR is easy it's not because it just means that the margins are so much more fine as any mistake you make in an oval race it just gets magnified and that's very much the case here so you can't afford to make any mistake otherwise you drop off the slipstream and then you've got really no chance of trying to catch it back up especially if people aren't fighting and they're working together so it's very much a tactical race and that is very good and something you should look out for during the course of the race is just how close it is on the top right hand side of the screen on uh, the mini map just shows you just how close everyone is together and even though it is only lap two that it will stay rather close even towards the end of the race crossing the line then at the end of lap two going quickest on that lap in the slipstream of the top two just uh, diverted our attention away from the greek guy who we had a little battle with on lap one but then managed to get the better of him and now we can turn our attention to catching up, which we've done now, but then now uh, trying to get past the top two. Just looking, really looking for an opening. You could go for a savage lunge, of course, but it's very risky. And you do, of course, uh, stand a chance of making a big mistake, smashing someone off. So we still have four laps to go after this one. We can afford to be patient and wait for a good opening to arise. Lap number five now, lap number, uh, lap number four was pretty much as you were in that three. So Lionel Stern just waiting for Isaac to kind of make a mistake, which he wasn't really doing. He's kind of slow off that turn, and this might uh, create an opening here as he goes a little bit deep into that chicane. The space is going to open up. Matt Man has the underlap into the final hairpin. And I'm going to try to get the underlap on both of them on the way out. Bit of contact, door to door contact, bit of grass as we come through the final chicane side by side. I'm going to go from third to first, have the inside line then as we come across the line uh, to, uh, to begin lap number six, just chop across the front of him as we just got in front. So two laps to go, it's gone from defend, it's gone from, sorry, it's gone from attacking to now defending for two laps. Let's see if we can keep Matt Man behind. Don't need to go over to the right hand side fully, I don't think there, as the car can quite easily go for this left flat. Uh, it's easily a flat out chicane that. Matt Man right on that tail, I'm going to go defensive, 
into the hairpin he's on that left hand side so half looking at the track ahead half looking at the radar to see exactly where our opponent is through the final chicane one to go as we come through there move over to the right hand side just to minimize slipstream he moves over i move back over just all these little tricks to try to minimize the slipstream i mean you could you could zigzag like an absolute idiot across the track but i prefer just to make the one move and that was enough so coming through the long first uh, corner i think that a, hint, a hint of a lift is the quickest way through there let's go into the chicane then last time the top four very very close as we come into the final hairpin for the final time, which is going to be the biggest overtaking opportunity. He's not quite been able to take it, wasn't quite close enough. And on this occasion, it's going to be a victory. Unless this back marker does something silly, he doesn't. Thankfully, it gets out of the way as we come across the line to take a win. It was actually a really good race, that. Very, very close indeed. You see the top four within a second at the end of the race. So a good little fight, that. Enjoyed it and finally winning a race for once. We're gonna to move to the next race, Sakuba Circuit. Now, we're gonna turn on probably what we could call the chaos button. So if we go to practice slash race, then we can do reverse grid, which is essentially the way to create carnage um, in Gran Turismo Sport, in any, or in any motor racing, to be honest. So, the results in the previous race, reversed. I won, therefore we're starting last. Away from the line we go. A couple of issues, I think, as a couple of people don't really move off the line. It creates absolute anarchy. I've gone from 16th up into 10th, and I wasn't quite sure exactly what happened. I think one person didn't really move, or two people didn't move, and it created absolute carnage. This is an eventuality which I'm very used to from Forza. It's something that I learned from Forza, which is just always immediately be ready that the person in front of you doesn't move off of the line because it happens a lot in, in Forza Motorsport and if it happens in Grand Turismo Motorsport it doesn't happen so much here but always be ready for that possibility that someone in front doesn't move and therefore you can take evasive action you're always planning out your escape route just in case it happens most of the time it won't but sometimes it does and then those times it does happen you'll be safe so gain 10 positions on this first lap going from 16th up into 6th place but well, we've got uh, 9 laps or 8 more after this one in which to try to gain a few more positions so we've gone through with Mapman as we come through the final corner so yeah oh my god look at that 2 drivers parked on the grid that's probably going to cause quite a lot of carnage at some point we're going smashing into the back of Mapman and to back off the throttle there just to make sure he keeps his position in fact he really gains out of that to be honest he gets a really good drive it's as if Paolo the best here obviously isn't the best at pressing the accelerator as he loses a lot of momentum on the way out of that turn. I'm going to take a, a little bit of AstroTurf, and by a little I mean all four wheels be on the line, which is illegal, but oh well. Now he takes the line there, tried to cut back, wasn't quite able to do it, and Matt Man just gaining a lot of ground here, such as Paolo, gets, um, probably turns out to be the best at getting penalties as well. Goes in too early and I get the cut back, waited for him to go across get the overtake job done on the way out of the corner so up into fifth position as we come up towards the final corner of lap number two seven to go after this one Matt man just in front of us this is the thing when you're trying to make your way through the traffic as quickly as possible you don't want your big opponents aka Matt man in this occasion to, to gain too many positions or to get too many people ahead of you so we're just going to follow him through here just park ourselves on the inside so when he creates the, the opening, you kind of follow him through the opening and uh, take the position with him. So we both go past the Italian driver there into the left-hand hairpin, middle of the circuit. We're going to receive a tiny bit of contact, push it a little bit wider than, than we would have liked, but uh, just chop back across and take the racing line as the Italian there just backs out slightly. So up into fourth place, uh, near enough at the end of lap number three here into the hairpin, is there anything on? No, not quite, a little bit too far back. As we come out onto the back straight, up behind the Norwegian driver now, to the two Brits hunting him down. Is the space gonna open up here on the right-hand side? Not normally a, an amazing overtaking opportunity, this one, because it's quite tricky to keep the car planted all the way through the corner. Man, man does go wide, though. 
and the space does open up. We move up into third. The Norwegian uh, thinks about going defensive. In fact, he's going very defensive. We're going to have to go around the outside. And I think about the complete outside move. It doesn't quite open up, though. And we lose completely our momentum as Matman manages to cut back on the pair of us and get to the right-hand side. I've gone back down to fourth. Norwegian driver is a little bit slow on the apex and Matman is going to be able to get the run on the outside. Again, I'm going to follow him through. He creates the opening. I'm going to follow him through that opening. He's gone through the right-hander. And um, I thought he was going to back out there. He kind of had a barely a nose alongside but decided to keep it there. We'll just keep the position. Lose a bit of ground to Matman. But five laps to go to try to keep within the, the toe and try to hunt him back down, as you see here. Right on his tail by lap seven. So, put in a blistering 101.8 on lap number five to reduce the deficit. I don't know what that was. That was a weird little lag wiggle as we come into that corner. It seemed like a very unusual movement. Um, not really a human kind of movement there. It seemed a bit alien, to be honest. But um, we resume battle as we come into the final corner again. We've done this move earlier in the race. We're going to try to do it again. Matman just drives really wide, perhaps too respectful of my presence. Gave me too much space, too much respect. And we're going to go up into eighth place, defending turn one and breaking nice and early to meet that apex to keep the position and keep Matman behind. So into this middle hairpin, he's right on our tail, less than two tenths of a second behind. So this Mazda really does make for some very close racing. And I'm pretty sure it is one of the FIA races later on in the Nations Cup season. And so that'll be interesting to race. But yeah, these cars are actually really good fun. They make for very close racing. Um, this is something, again, in Forza Motorsport, this, you see this a lot. Um, it's, it's the slower cars which can make for some good racing. And on, on Gran Turismo, I found that a lot of the slow cars especially the road cars don't make for great racing because especially in the FIA races you see a lot of trains getting formed and people can't overtake it's, it's the race cars which are better on this game I think but in, in maybe Forza I think a lot of the uh, C, D, B class cars are actually very probably some of the better cars to, ra uh, cars to race on that game but here we are around BB Raceway I thought I I would like to try an oval this isn't it's not really an oval to be honest, it's more of a love heart. But you get the idea. There's only really one corner that you need to break for in these cars. But um, I suppose it would be similar to the Kyoto race at the beginning of the video, in the sense that it really does come down to fine margins when, you, when you're on an oval. And of course, the strategy of the slipstream um, also plays a massive part. So come down the inside of uh, Diesel here. He was very quick in that Saguba race. He started on pole, I think, because he wasn't in the Kyoto race. And I just couldn't catch up with him at all. He was very, very quick. And um, he put it on pole for this race. By lap five, I was sitting in a comfortable, comfortable position, putting in the fastest lap there, non-slipstream assisted, 33.7. But Diesel, Matman, the Norwegian guy, in fact, about seven players, very, very close indeed. Lap five now. And again, looking at the radar top, uh, or the map, top right of the screen, you see just how close it is. Um, there's, a, there's a very big group of about six, seven cars in this leading pack here. So four laps to go as you cross the line here. And I didn't defend that early enough as um, Diesel managed to get alongside. And he takes the lead. I lose a bit of momentum on the way out of turn one. And that gives Matman the invitation then to come up the inside. So down to third, no sweat. You know, there's, there's still three and a half laps left to go. Um, as Diesel um, actually grazes the barrier, and that's a bit of foreshadowing, as we'll see in just a moment. I'm trying to go around the outside here, it's not quite going to happen. A long way round, plus I don't have the slipstream. And you see just how close it is now. Top two right in front. Then we've got fourth on my side, fifth right behind, sixth place not too far behind either. So very, very close indeed. It's gone from turn one for the seventh time. This is very, very close racing indeed, and it could really go any way of six players by the end. Matman doing a good job of just keeping that position. But again, the fine margins count as I smash into the wall. Barrier collision. I'm not sure why you should get a penalty for that, really, because I definitely, I definitely lost out. In fifth place here, I'm not going to get a result because I've got the penalty. But look how close this is. 
uh, lap nine of nine, coming across the line, almost side by side, the top two, actually at the fastest lap of the race on that final lap. The top four were within three tenths of a second. That was how close it was. So amazing stuff around the BB Raceway. Track we don't really see too often. Reverse grid then for Maggior. We press the chaos button. Let's see if that transpires to be the case here. Into the first corner, this uh, 90 degree left, and then you've got the very sharp 180 degree hairpin immediately following. So we're going to go up the inside there of the British driver, who leaves the space, and the Hungarian guy. Try to go past, doesn't quite materialise, we don't get the momentum on the way out. So the Hungarian retakes the position. Someone there, the Greek guy in... Nice try, but that's not quite the Mazda Touring car. As we... look, Just look how close that back is up behind. So this is fairly close racing. Also, when you consider that... Um, it's not like everyone here is SS rated or A plus S. It's a really big mix of ability in this lobby. So that kind of shows you just how close these cars can be. So they're very close even though everyone's quite different on ability. This Hungarian guy is all over the place. I think he might be drunk, turning across for no reason there, and then flashing his headlights. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe a little bit too much Palenka. Who knows? Around the outside of Olympus, who broke way too early, Get the job done on him and then around the outside maybe of the Italian not quite so we've got the the, uh, the double Italian roadblock here let's see if we can try to get past them both and then we've got the American of Isaac up in the lead it's not quite going to happen for us here in fact what it is we're going to get side by side with Paolo Di Canio now coming through the chicane towards the final corner and we're looking for the 50 board on the left hand side and the the arrow just before that and that sets you into that corner nicely on the power as early as you can be as, as you can see there the difference we really got the power nice and early compared to the Italian there and that gives us the extra momentum down the, down the straight and that's, that's just the key really just getting on the power as early as you can while keeping the car as um, straight as possible through the corner without sliding it any sliding really reduces all your momentum but you don't want that at all so we spent lap 3 Setting in the quickest lap of the race so far, 53.4. And that's put us right onto the back of Isaac now. We can go for the lead, hopefully, of the race. Halfway into the race, let's see if we can go for the win. It will be our second win of the lobby. It seems like the only race I can really win on this game are just my own lobbies. So maybe I have to do more of them. So, firmly into that slip stream. Big gap behind. Not really a chance of us losing it. It's just three seconds, the gap now. Six tenths of a second quicker than our PB, which is the fastest of the race. Going to the final corner, the space opens up. I kind of positioned myself there in such a way that I could follow him through or go for the move, depending on where he breaks. He breaks quite early, so it actually turned out that going for the move was the best best thing. So we're gonna go across the line here to set presumably the quickest lap of the race again, yes. Three times quicker, 53.1. Defending against Isaac into the first corner and just keeping our lead. And then through that first corner, through the second and eventually end of lap six. We win the race. I managed to win a race. It was actually good fun, that one, trying to uh, fight through some of the players there. And then we move to the final race of the video. So starting second on the grid, the finish driver here, Taniel, uh, getting a really good launch from third, and he's immediately going to take the lead of the race. Three abreast into the first corner. Very, very close stuff. See the pack uh, swarming through turn number one as we progress around. This is Sardinia B, and you might notice the theme with the circuits I've chosen for this. So BB Raceway and Kyoto, the small circuit, uh, Sukuba, of course, um, and uh, the center Maggiore version. Um, they're, they're all the smaller tracks, so I don't think this car would particularly work well around a lot of the big tracks like. Like the full Suzuka, maybe not, or uh, Fuji. It, it would work. I mean, it's not totally out of the question, but I do think it's definitely better suited to these smaller, slightly smaller circuits. I think these cars go well around these smaller tracks. Um, but we shall see. Maybe we should try out some 200 laps of Nordschleife in these cars. Uh, that might go quite well. In fact, Nordschleife I think could work actually because Nordschleife is quite narrow. It could actually work in these cars. 
So we get the job done there on the finish drive. A bit of contact. Door-to-door -door contact is kind of to be expected to an extent in these cars. As we go into turn one, Diesel goes defensive. Can we make it around the outside? No, not quite. He covers it off very well. Lap later, same story. He's going to go defensive. I'm going to go to the right-hand side. Get a really good run on him. Side by side into turn one. Looking for the 50 board. We're going to break just before it. Trying to put him as narrow as we can. Try to go around the outside and I very quickly realise that's not going to happen. Just back out. And all this fighting here has invited Daniel back into the equation. As we then come towards the 90 degree left-hander. I'm going to back off to let him go in. It's actually probably the quicker thing for both of us to do that. As we uh, go around the corner and have a massive slide on the kerb. And yes, that's right. That's the gods telling us that we must finish in sixth position, obviously. So I haven't finished sixth, but I have now, as uh, we cross the finish line, to finish in our deserved and designated position. But there we go. I do hope you enjoyed the video as always, guys. Let me know your thoughts. I really enjoyed racing these cars. Maybe you should give them a go. Set up a lobby, master touring car. It's great fun. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.